before we even get into After Effects, I gotta get a sword. And I can see why this stuff is already on clearance, because they were a little bit overzealous with their merchandising. They have the power swords in every color, even though the red one is the only one that actually exists in the movie. Oh my god, I did not know that made noise. They also have some even crazier ones, like they have the zebra stripe one over here, and the tie-dye one here, and the polka dot one here. And here we have the uh, multicolored sword. You'd think that one would be more expensive, but uh, it's not. I also have these morphers here, which do not appear in the movie at all. Vote in the poll which color sword you think I should get. Although I'm telling you now your vote is meaningless because I'm getting red. Also, we don't have a Krispy Kreme where I live and I've been to every store I could think of. And I've come to the conclusion that Krispy Kremes are simply not available. So let's hope the joke still works. Also, the Mastodon Zord has eight legs and shoots webs. Okay, I'm done. I pinky swear that we're gonna get into the After Effects part in just a sec, but real quick, I wanted to show you how I got this thing slightly more camera ready. It was really easy. First, to add some depth, I hit it with some black rattle can spray paint, mostly on the red parts, and I wiped away the excess, so it just remains in the crevices. This is called weathering. Now this lighter blue part here is supposed to be metal. This more translucent blue part that lights up is supposed to be made of energy, so that's fine. But this middle part is supposed to be made of metal, so what I'm going to do is cover it up with some aluminum tape. This stuff is used by plumbers, I think, so you find it in the hardware section. It's super useful for DIY weapon props. Finally, in After Effects, uh, I've got my Footage imported, here's what I'm gonna work with. This footage of me looking just real serious. Um, I feel like I'm in a music video or something. Let's turn that audio off with the wind blowing in my hair like that. Bad, but we're actually going to start with this image today, not with the footage at all, just with this uh, photograph I took of this sword. This wasn't in the exact same location, but it was a similar time with similar lighting conditions. So um, it should integrate just fine. Also, if we look at the composition settings, you can see it's a little bit bigger than, than uh, what's actually necessary so that we just have all kinds of extra resolution to work with. So let's uh, duplicate that, hide the original. And right now I'm gonna cut out this main red part here. And I like to use a Roto Bezier mask to do this. Uh, what that means is like when you make a shape like this, it's gonna automatically give you curves. So you don't have to do it yourself, which is great because I hate doing stuff. So since I'm not rotoscoping here, I'm just cutting this out once. I'm going to take my time with it, but you don't have to take your time with me because I edit my tutorials. So I'll just speed it up for you because that's the type of guy I am. If you appreciate it, go ahead and subscribe. Okay, I've got that and I'm going to pre-compose that. So now it's not a masked image anymore, it's just an image with transparency. Or as it's actually called, an image with alpha. <laughs> Power Rangers. So um, I'm going to also add a new solid, which can just be a black solid, that's cool. And we're going to add the linear wipe effect to it. And turn on our transparency so we can see what we're doing. And I need it to move from left to right. So I think the way it's set up now, okay, it's fine. So we're gonna keyframe it from 100 and move forward maybe two seconds and keyframe it down to zero. Now the reason the linear wipe is cooler than using a mask in my opinion is because we can feather it out as much as we want, but at the beginning and end of the wipe, it's still gonna be clean. We don't have to account for that feather. It's just done automatically. So um, I used to wonder like, why do people bother with an effect when you could just animate it with masks? But I think that's a good reason why. Let me that out a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a rough and edges effect to it as well. And we need this to be kind of like spiky and organic spidery looking almost. So I think I'm gonna use the spiky edge type. Cool, and uh, not quite big enough. So the way we can fix that is increasing the feather, increasing the feather, not decreasing it. And it's also looking a little too spaced together. So 
we can just change the scale of the actual effect itself, make it a little bit bigger. And that is about what I'm looking for. So I'm also going to just move forward to where we can see the entire solid and scale it down to fit the size of this weapon here. Okay, and I'll pre-compose that as well, moving all of the attributes, call that the mat. The other thing I should call red bit. And the reason I pre-composed both of those is so now they each have the same dimensions as the composition, which is necessary for this, which is the displacement map effect. And this is how we're going to make our mat look 3D. So we'll use the red bit as our displacement source and bump up the horizontal displacement by a bunch. I'm not really going to bother much with the vertical displacement. It's not really going to add to our effect really. I mostly just want this horizontal displacement. And one thing it's doing here is it's starting to reveal part of the image underneath, which is less than ideal, but a quick and filthy way to fix that is just with keyframing. So at the beginning, we'll turn our displacement up to something absurd like 600, hit a keyframe, and then go to two seconds, which is where we ended this animation, and change the displacement down to zero. And now the displacement is just going to shrink over time. But it's still very displaced over this round part here, and on this flatter part, it doesn't matter as much. So this is really okay. And now we can very easily just go to the red bit and tell it to use the layer above it as an alpha mat, and that's how you do that. All right, now uh, we need to mask out the blade. So let's duplicate our bottom image again, and I'm just gonna draw around this blade, but I'm not gonna use a roto bezier mask for this one because it's a sharp shape, not a curvy shape. So let's just mask around that blade. And now I'm going to move to something like two seconds and two frames. So this is just a little bit after the previous animation is completed. And I'm gonna hit P for position and set a keyframe here. And then I'm just gonna go back in time and just move the blade off of screen. And then we can also set up a new solid which we'll just use to chop off the part of the blade that we don't want to see. So I'll just keyframe the position of that. Okay, it's looking a little bit rough. It would be smoothed over with some motion blur. That would make it look a lot better, but I'm not going to do that actually. Let me turn the motion blur off for all those layers, and I will explain why in a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and grab the blade and set it to use the layer above it as an alpha inverted mat. And then we'll grab the blade, that mat, the red part, and that mat, and pre-compose all of those. Moving all of the attributes to the new composition, and we'll just call it uh, whatever, I don't know, sword. Okay, and we can actually duplicate that and add an effect to this top layer, which is going to be the find edges effect. And if we invert that, now we have our edges glowing. And this is why I didn't want to use the motion blur because it would have messed up these edges. They wouldn't have been crisp like that. So I do have a solution for that coming up, but now we've got our edges and we need to animate this as well with a mat also. So let's just add a new solid. And then I'm just going to animate this solid to kind of keep up with, with this crispy part up here. And then once that's over, just kind of animate it to follow the end of the blade. And that was very rough, but it's fine. And we can add a fast blur to it. And now with this layer, if you just grab the layer itself on the timeline and move it back and forth, you can decide if you want to see more of these lines or less. I want to add a little bit more. And there we go. Those are my glowy edges. I'm just going to add another black solid to fill in this back part here so we don't have issues with our glowing. Drop that to the bottom of this three layer stack here and then grab all of them, pre-compose them, call that the edges. And we can make these glow in with the curves, bump up the blue channel to make it blue. Maybe take out some of the colors that are not blue. There, that looks good right there. And now if you hit this button here, which is the preserve underlying transparency button, it will only show up where it's needed. And then we can also change the mode of it to an ad or something. Screen, I might go with screen because ad is a little extreme. We can grab the edges in the sword and pre-compose those together and call it growing sword. 
And on top of this, if you have Real Smart Motion Blur, it's a third party plugin, but if you have it, go ahead and just drop that on. And that'll give you the motion blur that we were missing from before. If you don't have it, then you have two options. You can use Force Motion Blur. And now this one is gonna give you completely accurate motion blur if you have layers that are actually moving, but it does take a while to render. And if you're on the Creative Cloud, there's also one called Pixel Motion Blur which is kind of like real smart motion blur. Uh, it's not quite as good, but it'll get you something similar. Okay, so we still need our energy part of the blade. So let's go ahead and take care of that. In this case, I am not actually gonna cut it out of the image. Instead, I'm just gonna make a new one. So let's just make a new solid and we can go ahead and mask around the shape of the blade. Okay, and then as far as effects on that layer, I wanna add some fractal noise. And since this is such a high res composition, the noise is kind of tiny. So I'm actually going to bump up the scale of that. And I'm gonna take down the contrast, which you don't see very often. Usually you have people turn the contrast way up. Not today. We just don't want very much at all. We just need a little bit of detail. And then I'll add a tritone effect to it. And on that tritone, I'll just steal some of the blue from the underlying layer, and there we go. We've got our blade. We can also hit Alt and click the stopwatch on this evolution and hit time times 200 or any number of your choosing to give it a little bit of evolution. Also, this blade is a little bit translucent, so let's take down the opacity of this layer, but not by much. Let's keep it at 90. Well, actually 91 to be safe. And now we just need to grow on the blade. So our metal blade has its animation ending at two seconds and two frames. So let's skip ahead a little bit to two seconds and four frames and hit M to bring up the mask properties. And we can set a keyframe for the mask expansion there and then go back to not quite the beginning, but back to a frame where we can see the metal blade coming out. And on this frame, we can take our expansion down to make it negative and just do that until it's gone. And then we'll easy ease our last keyframe. And we can actually turn on motion blur for this layer and it will work. All right, and we've got our sword animating on. We did a good job, go team. Now we need to put it into the footage. And that's a little bit easier said than done. And the reason is, is because I am a vampire. So I'm gonna skip in a little bit to where my hands kind of settled down. And as you can see, this hand is untrackable because it's just, it's blown out, it's too white. This is actually me with a tan because the other night I went out and it was a full moon. So I uh, got kind of burnt to a crisp, I should have check the moon report. Um, there is something we can do about this though. If we add a curves effect to it and just darken it, darken it, darken it real dark. Yeah, if we darken it a lot, you can start to see a little bit of detail and that's gonna save us. So we actually need to pre-compose this and send all the attributes into the new composition or else the tracker won't be able to see the effects that we added. We need a new null object too. But now from here, we should be able to track it fine. Whereas earlier, it just would not have worked. So let's just select our layer and hit track motion. And technically we should track the rotation too, but we're lucky enough to have this one usable track point. And I am not going to tempt fate. So let's just track forwards. That's enough, our animation is not that long. We can apply it to the null object and I'll just end the composition where our tracking is ended. And now I'm just gonna grab our composition of the sword, it's huge. So I'll scale it down. I know I need this nub here to be about the size of my hand, which is still all dark and green. Let's go into that composition and turn off the curves. It served its purpose. Scaling this down to about the right size. We can rotate it, stick it on the hand. Okay, that's good. That is about in place. Let's move the endpoint to match where the tracking starts and then just parent that to the null as well, and this should work out.
And just for the final and finishing touch, I have the entire edit here of the opening scene or whatever here in After Effects. And since this blade is supposed to be made of energy, I just want to add a little bit of glow to it. So the way I did that is I already have this adjustment layer good to go. And I'm going to add a key light, just like the blue of the blade. And um, kind of making me look like I have lipstick on. Doesn't look half bad though. I'm liking that. Look, but uh, let's check out the screen mat just so that we can verify that we're really only getting exactly what we want. So we can play with the screen gain and the screen balance. Try to get that right. And then also the screen mat. We can flip the black and the white. Doesn't have to be perfect, just pretty close is good. And then set it to the intermediate result. And now we have a super goth black blade. I would have loved this in high school. This reminds me of that Vanta black thing that's been going around the internet lately. Have you guys been on the internet lately? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Anyway, let's add an invert effect and just invert the alpha of that and then add our glow. And then just change the settings of the glow to get it to look how you want. I'm also going to add a second glow that's just going to be really big. And on this first one, I'm going to change the glow operation from add to none. And then just to get this working properly, we need to add a solid composite effect. I'm actually going to drop that before the glow and composite this onto black. And there we go. Now we've got our glow looking sweet. And then we can just set the transfer mode of that whole layer to an add or a screen. And now we have our glow. And that's it friends, we're all done. There's the effect. I hope you had a good time and learned a whole bunch. Now you're a little bit smarter than you were before. As usual, I've been Adrian for ProductionCreate.com and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.